Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's hope. Hi, Vivian. Hi, Robin. Oh. Steven. Wendy. Ariel. Debbie. Bill. Good morning. Good morning. Amy, hello. Good morning. I'm going to place us on mute as we're getting on this morning. Um, since we all have different things going on in the background, mentally and where we are physically. Um, I want to check in this morning. Um, I wasn't here last week. I, I took the week to go away and be with family. But I want to check in um, and ask you a question about why you're here this morning. Um, so the reason may have changed since you first started coming to this group on Monday morning. So I just want to um, really take a minute to ask yourself why you're here, why you came to do this this morning. And I'm going to ask you to put that in the chat. And so I'll start off. I am here because or for. And I answered that I'm here to have a place to center myself and reground. So check in with yourself. Notice what it is, no judgment. If it's like just something to get you out of bed in the morning, that's fine. Um, refocus, self-care, be with community, to be more relaxed and calm. And connect Jewishly. Wonderful. All right. Spiritually and physically ready for when we all get back to work. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And then just loving meditation and soaking it up wherever you can get it. Centering, Richard shared. Mm -hmm. Great. So this is why we're here, <laughs> different reasons. Um, and I'm sure there are other ones that will come to you even after you have the experience each week. And it might change over time. Um, this morning we're going to do a meditation and within that meditation we're going to focus in a little bit on the Shema in one particular phrase in the Shema um, as we do so. Um, and then we'll have a little time to check in um, at the end and see how everyone's doing as well. Okay? So I want to invite you to allow yourself to switch from the usual mode of doing of activity of going from one thing to the next constantly thinking of what movement you need to make happen what thing you need to control and allow yourself consciously to become still. And to switch to a mode of non-doing. And as you do that, you can close your eyes and focus simply on the fact that you are breathing. 
each of us in different ways is breathing. Just notice the cycle and the rhythm of your breath. There's no need to change your breath. Just notice that you are breathing. And now that you've noticed just the existence of your breath, notice and become aware of the movement of your breath as it enters and leaves your body. Observe the breath deep down in your belly if you can. Feeling the abdomen as it expands gently on the in breath and as it falls back towards your spine on the out breath. not trying to do anything or get any place, simply being with your breath. You might notice that you feel the breath in other places. Perhaps noticing the rise and fall of your chest or shoulders as the breath enters and exits your body. Just notice wherever you feel the breath most completely. Whichever part of your body or face awakens and moves the most with your breath. You will find that from time to time, your mind will wander off into thoughts 
even fantasies, maybe anticipations of the future or reviews of the past, worrying, memories, many things will come knocking. And when you notice that your attention is no longer here, no longer with your breath, without judging yourself, just bring your attention back to your breath and ride its waves once again. Following the breath from moment to moment. And bring yourself back to your breath whenever you need to, whenever other thoughts or noises take you from it, just bring yourself back without judgment. It's just part of the practice. As you observe your breathing, you might find from time to time that you're noticing other feelings or sensations in your body. So as you maintain awareness of your breathing, see if you can expand your awareness to the other parts of your body as you sit here. Take time beginning with your feet and legs, just to notice the position they've found this morning. Noticing any sensations in your feet, in your legs. Becoming fully aware. Awakening them by wiggling or finding movement. Just be here with whatever you notice, whatever feelings and sensations come up. And now you move your attention 
to the parts of your body that are touching the chair or couch or floor, wherever you are seated, just notice the parts of your body that are touching that place where you're sitting. Notice any sensations or feelings in your sit bones, up your spine and back. all the way to your shoulders. And notice any tension in your neck or face, letting your jaw hang loose if it feels tight. Letting your eyebrows relax in your forehead. Coming back to your breath. With this awareness of body and breath, Eloahine Shama Shenatata be Teorahi. The soul that you have placed in me is We go from individual breath and purity of soul to our collective consciousness. We, 18 people on this call, in a place of mindfulness and centeredness and calm, Caring for self, but desiring to connect with others. We ground ourselves in the Shema. Listen, Israel, Adonai, that is your God, Adonai is one. Blessed is that name of oneness forever and ever. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ba
Returning again to your breath. The words of the Shema invite us to notice, to listen fully. And so we take a few moments of silence to be with the breath. There will be moments where other thoughts will come to mind. I invite you to notice them and label them. Give them a name. It might be fear or worry or care or stress. Just notice them without judging yourself and return to the breath. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Vahed The last words that we say in the Shema, Le'olam Va'ed, represent the idea of forever or eternity. It is so hard to grasp this idea of forever, of eternity. And I was reminded of this this past week when I was at the shore with family, each morning I would take a walk and see horseshoe crabs coming onto the shore as their mating season. And they came up to lay their eggs and the lucky few made it back to the ocean, but others did not their energy and the waves were not in sync. And so every morning the shore was littered with the, the bodies of these horseshoe crabs who had made their final journey to lay their eggs and found their final resting place 
in the sand. Unbeknownst to them, they would slowly be drawn out to the sea and back into the cycle of eternal life in a way. At first, when I saw these creatures, I felt a deep sadness and ache for them. I worked so hard to make it up the slight angle of the shore to plant new life, only to find themselves unable to make it back to the sea. And I realized that dull ache came from a place of thinking that was the end for them. But really, they returned to the sea as it was and were re-entered into the cycle of life and living and would constantly contribute to the vibrancy of the ecosystem of which they'd always be a part. And this provided a sort of salve for my ache and sadness. Once I realized that my walks on the sandy beach were different each morning. And so I wanted this morning to give you, to, to give you a, a visualization from Jewish wisdom about this idea of eternity as we ourselves are trekking up sandy beaches up sometimes what feel like uphill battles and place ourselves in eternity sometimes with sand we imagine our lives like an hourglass where the sand is quick quickly making its way and we are compelled by the urgency of our finitude to make our mark to do more and to act in certain ways and Judaism invites us to think about eternity le olam va'ed and a rabbi Eliyahu Dessler invites us to imagine also a beach with white powdery sand that stretches as far as the eye can see. And on that beach is an enormous mound of sand. A huge, huge mountain, if you can picture it, of sand, not just a dune, a large formation and it sits there. Just sitting. Notice as you picture this mountain of sand, if you see bright blue skies or gray cloudy ones, whatever you imagine is fine. Just notice what it looks like in your mind's eye. Then imagine that once every thousand years, a bird flies over to that mountain, picks up one peck of sand and carries it into the sea and drops it into the ocean. It is almost impossible to imagine how long it would take for that bird to get all of the sand into the ocean. That is eternity. And so sometimes when we are in the place of visualizing an hourglass with sand quickly, quickly dripping through we can imagine eternity instead. So I invite you this week to imagine a struggle or a challenge internally 
or in your work or family life or as a person in this society that you're struggling with. Notice how you would approach that issue if you had an hourglass in front of you and sand and time quickly running out. And then imagine how you would approach that place of struggle, whatever it is, with this mountain of eternity in front of you. Neither is right or wrong. We have both in Judaism. We have Shabbat each week as if an hourglass on our time. And yet we also have Le'olam Va'ed, this idea of eternity. And each help us balance out the sense of urgency with a sense that we are part of a much larger cycle of eternal life. We are the bird and we are the sand. Elohai neshama shenatata bi tehorahi. Shavua Tov. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining with me. I invite you to open your eyes and return to the room and of course, your breath is always with you and your body, but come to this place awake this morning. And I just want to check in really briefly to see how you're doing in this moment. Um, Good morning. And ask if there's anything you're leaving with this morning, anything you're taking with you, a feeling, a question a hope, you can share it in the chat or um, I can happy to unmute you if you'd like to share out loud. <laughs> 